Hey guys, welcome to the Kid Bonks channel. I am Brandon. Yeah, this is me. This is the guy, the ugly face behind the ugly art here. Nah, it's it's not ugly. I don't think it's ugly. I mean, it's okay. It's that amateur art. I think I think that's fair to say. But you know, amateur art can be good, and that's that's kind of how I look at it. My skills kind of lack in like anatomy and that kind of thing. It's, it's passion. If you have passion for, for what you do and you can communicate the concepts or communicate the idea of the piece, then, uh, th then you'll make something good. But I'm hoping in, so I'm hoping with this channel I can communicate what I do and if you like what I do then maybe, maybe you'll get something out of it. I don't know. So anyways, that's the, the really rough intro to me uh, and to the channel. I did like three other of these and the video kept messing up. So hopefully this one sticks because if I have to do this again, it's it's going to be a lot worse than this. So anyways, uh, the, today what I'm actually going to do, if I can get into it, if you just calm down, stop asking so many questions, we're going to get there, is talk about the last piece I did, not the, the last piece that I uploaded here on the channel, which is Mellow, which you should go and watch. I, I like it. I think it's a cute little concept. Um, but the piece that I'm talking about is this, uh, Lady in the Water is what I call it. And so I didn't record this one, and I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't because it, it was kind of a cool process, and that would have been cool for you guys to watch. But then again, I feel like since I didn't have that that kind of pressure kind of like something recording every movement, because like I said, I'm, I'm not too confident in my work. I'm, I'm an amateur, face it. So, um, and I, here I am putting a video on like how to do art or how to, I don't know what this video is. I don't, I don't think it's a tutorial. But anyways, I didn't have any of that looking at me. I think without having that pressure, I was able to focus just on creating something good, and I didn't have to focus on it was the process smooth or not. And that's kind of things that I, I, I look into when I'm making the videos is like, how well am I doing this, and am I going, am I zooming in too much? How would that be for the video quality? None of that, just good old old fashioned art making. I didn't make a time lapse video, but I did save like some versions. So let's Quentin Tarantino this shit and go all the way back to the beginning to see how we got to the end. Dane Cook joke right there. So this is um, kind of how I started. And I'm sorry for the audio. I, I'm using this. This is the, the mic. So <laughs> uh, hopefully I'm going to set it down so I can go to the keyboard. But this is uh, this is what I did. If you watch a lot of videos on YouTube about art, they'll they'll talk about thumbnails, and this is kind of like my take on that. Is I started with these four concepts because I wanted to do art because that's that's what I do, um, but I didn't know what I wanted to really invest a lot of time in. So I started with uh, with these thumbnails and looking at them, it's kind of like what the hell's going on? But I get what's going on, so that's all that matters and I can take you through my thought process here um, so the, the first idea was um, a, kind of like a landscape view of this of this kid this is a stick figure and this is an arcade machine and he's just like I can imagine like you know he's really intense in like this arcade like a, or it's not an arcade it's a pinball machine um, and then I could have some nice little uh, light coming from the back of the room and it, this gets into the, the idea that I was saying that you just communicate the concept so like they wouldn't have to be very detailed to, to understand um, that he's in an arcade just some you know bright random lights of color maybe some stick figures running in the background or something um, but and then have like most of the detail in the foreground there so that was the first idea then the, the second one was like uh, like some kind of person stretching and like here's a dog this this represents a dog and they're on the beach uh, 
and yeah, uh, so that's that's uh, that one. Um, and then this one, like since I was in that state of mind where I didn't know what I wanted to draw, uh, it's like, well, draw that, draw that that you of a person just kind of like this, not knowing what to draw, and. So this is like a desk and computer light, and he's kind of like that, and maybe like a, a cat laying on the floor, and then the window there in the background. And then the last one was um, the one I act actually did, um, so the lady in the water, and I'm communicating here, it's just like some foreground, uh, like shrubs and stuff, and uh, a tree, and then there's the lady, and then there's some trees in the the distance and I knew the trees in the distance didn't have to be too detailed but I knew I wanted like like some foreground up here with like some good details of the tree um so yeah uh, definitely doing this at the beginning is uh rewarding because I was I thought of the of the guy in machine at first and then after I really like sat down and thought about it and started dishing out these thumbnails I knew that that wasn't the one that I wanted to spend the next two, three, however many hours it was going to take me to, to complete this. Um, and if that's a question you're wondering about, how long did this take? Uh, maybe four hours, and that's actually pretty long, I think, as far as standards go. It's like if you're wanting to be a concept designer, because like you should be able to communicate the concept pretty quickly and then do multiple uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a concept designer, and so I don't know the, the standards. But anyways, um, it, it doesn't matter how long it takes because for me as an artist, I just like the idea of being a concept artist, but really I'm just here to make good work for, for the channel because I'm not, I'm not actively trying to seek to become a concept artist or get paid to do this. Um, I'm just making art. Just make art and don't care about how long it takes you. I gotta say that out loud to you guys in order to convince myself. Anyways, all right, moving on. I'm looking at myself, which is very uh, conceited of me. So I need to look at the at the, the the thing at you guys. So <laughs> sorry, I'm probably not gonna do it. The rest. All right, so this was the next one. So how I got here was first I I took this this piece right here. Let's see if I can actually. Actually, I I got rid of all this. I, I mean, I saved this because, but so I got rid of all that, and then I saved it as like version one or something, so I would have those other thumbnails just in case. And then I I merged these, and then I look. This is all I did. I just blew it up to the size that I wanted because I knew I was going to go back and refine it because I'm I'm not not worried about pixelation or anything at this point. So I blew it up. I mean, you can see how this is at 100%, so you can see how big I actually blew it up. To, to get to this point, I took some photos from Google of like, I knew like I wanted some greens and some like swamp. So I Google like swamp or something like that. And, and I took those in and I pasted them in here and then I blurred them like so you couldn't tell what it was or anything. And then I I applied some uh, effects on it, like over here, like here. This is what I added. This is the picture I got from Google. And then you can change the blend modes to like color dodge or overlay is a good one or even multiply. And then, so yeah, I had these blurred. Filter, blurred. I, I'm kind of going fast here now, so I don't know if I'm effectively communicating what I did. And after doing all that, I, uh, I got this color that I was really happy with. Um, and that's kind of just jump-starting the process instead of going over here. This isn't my painting setup. This is my painting setup. If you watch my videos, you'll <laughs> recognize this. Um, so instead of like going over here and picking the green and like, well, like I, I know it's going to be kind of gloomy, so it's probably low saturated, probably kind of dark, probably something on that along that lines. Let's see how close I actually was. A little bit more saturated, but anyways, that was. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit more saturated and darker. But anyways, you get the idea. So instead of picking your colors, you can just jump start it by grabbing some photos from real life and kind of getting your swatches from there. So I got my colors. I got my 
my little bit of line work I did from the draft on there. So I'm ready to start kind of detailing this out. Um, and like I said, so I, I knew the, the, the concept from the thumbnail. So the trees, the lady, the water, and the trees in the background and the shrubs in, in the front. I think all that's clear, kind of communicating this. So yeah, that's enough to say about that one. Next, so that's kind of a big jump from the last one, but let's see. Um, got my tree, got the shrubs, uh, added another tree here on the right, apparently, and then trying to trying to make uh, the image a little bit more clear, a little bit more readable uh, over here on the left by adding uh, the ground um, going into the water. And then I started adding the, the reflections, the, the girl, a little bit of playing around here. Like I'm not really sure how to how do you draw a shadow on top of water and reflection underneath that. Overall, I think the the concept that I was trying to communicate is being communicated. And then I knew like from this point, I'm like this isn't working. This is kind of repetitive to have like shrubs here and shrubs here. We'll make it bigger. Well, no, that's not really working either. So I had a tree to a really big tree to to. Uh, communicate the, the scale of this uh, swamp and, and the, the lady and everything. For this piece, I was really starting to experiment with uh, the, hard, the hard brush, uh, not painting everything with a soft brush. And that's something that I've kind of been doing in, my pa in the past. But I feel like if you're more confident with a hard brush and the colors with the hard brush, then the piece is going to look, I don't know, a little bit more interesting. Especially if you're making textures of a tree, like not all those textures need to be blended, and that's that's what a soft brush does. So that's you can see the marks that I'm starting to make on this tree with that. Anyways, with the lighting, if we were working from here to get to here, I was probably experimenting with the light. So like if I'm not sure about the light, so I want to add a new layer first, and then go to my brush. And since it's a light like like you want to kind of airbrush that on you would want it to be a soft brush not a hard brush i mean there's a situation for everything but for this case soft brush would communicate the light a little bit better take our our pen um and put the layer on color dodge so let me see if i could just eye drop one of these colors yeah if you just eye drop one of the colors you can already see the effect that it's starting to make. You're getting much vivid, more light. But I think I actually took it to a blue and then did a color dodge. And you gotta be cautious with the uh, having the layer set to color dodge because look how quickly it can blow up your painting. So use it sparingly, but it can be a helpful tool. Like I said, I don't know much about anatomy, so I'm not really sure <laughs> at this point what I'm doing, but I did take a course, uh, like a little small course on this uh, uh, site called Skillshare. They're pretty cool. They're like a designing, um, it's an e-learning site basically. Anyway, a course on gestures and uh, for me that was very helpful because it was talking about the just working with stick figures. Yeah, you can see in this like all I'm doing is working with stick figures. I don't know how much you can actually see in this. but. I mean, with this one and this one, you can obviously see the stick figure here. I, this is just a mess. <laughs> I don't know if that's readable at all. But yeah, start with the gestures first. If a stick figure can communicate emotion, then you're on the right path. Um, and that's all I was trying to do. And for this one, I, I knew, like, she's, she's washing her hair. That's what she's doing. That's what she's saying. So I didn't care about, like, is... Is this arm too long? Her hair is not looking right. Should like a portion of her face be sticking out? Don't get me wrong, that stuff is important and probably will make your art much better. But is for this piece, I uh, wasn't too concerned about uh, all the uh, ifs and what ifs and what nots. So moving on to the next one. So, okay, so what I found out, what could be helpful, uh, I mean, this is subjective, but. Uh, Working with grays really work. Like not gray, not gray gray, but like really low saturated colors. So if I grab my eyedropper here, like look at 
I mean, these are all pretty dark, so. Like, even, even this really bright blue doesn't go to its fullest saturation. I'm getting into territory that I'm not really sure if I'm correct to find or not because I haven't experimented enough, but I would say, like, you could put, like, a low saturated, you know, red with a low saturated, I don't know, blue? I don't know. You, you can make anything work a lot easier working with low saturated colors than you can with the higher saturated colors. All right, so let's uh, move on to the final. And the final is, is this. You've already seen it. Showed it at the beginning of the video. And voila. You know, this is 100% this is right here. But I don't, I think that's, let me see. Yeah, this is 100% right here. This is not the uh, the level that I designed it. Um, I'm usually like all the way all the way back here because I want to look at the, the piece as a whole and make sure the, the, uh, the whole piece is readable. You can make any individual piece readable. Like yeah that's that's a lady. That's a, there's a tree probably and there's some grass. But it doesn't matter how readable those individual pieces are if your whole concept doesn't work. Um, and I think for me, like this is a decent piece. Sure, some people, some, you know, really fancy art major person could could call me out on something of this. But for me and my standards and where I'm headed at in this particular place and time, I look at this and think, you know, this is, this is progress compared to where my work has been. Um, so, that's kind of what this channel is, the journey of me and my progress and me sharing any of that that I can with you, if if the demand calls for it. If this video gets <laughs> no views whatsoever, then, you know, maybe I'm, you know, wasting my breath, but we'll see. I think the reason why this uh, looked good is because of the prep work, the thumbnail. Make sure the thumbnail worked. Uh, at least in my eyes, probably not anybody else, but I think uh, overall the thumbnail should work first and then uh, you can move on from there. Uh, if you personally can see what it's saying, then I think that's a good point uh, to go from. Um, and then, you know, really putting the final touches on this um, with the lighting and the trees, this is all kind of guesswork. Like, I'm not really sure if the lighting would all the way reach back here. Um, if it was like coming up from this area and shine on here, but I didn't want to make it just black because that that doesn't read well. So I knew it had to had some kind of color, and just highlighting that out really makes it aesthetically pleasing. So you can fake it. You can just fake it and add thing, add little details like this that look cool, and not really know if the lighting actually works or not. Because play around with it enough, you'll eventually get it to look good and. Actually, now that I'm looking at this water, I'm like, there's too much of a transition between these two colors. So, but anyways, um, add in like little uh, details, like these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, but th these little stick things that people <laughs> breathe out of in like some cartoons. Uh, I knew that was a thing, so I was like, add those in and... I've watched a lot of speed art videos, so I, a lot of people add like vines and stuff swinging, so that that's something that I wanted to add. Anyways, so I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this piece. I hope you like it. I hope I have provided some information. Uh, and welcome to the Kitten Bombs channel. Yay! All right. Well. Uh, Give me a like if you liked it, and let me know if you want to see more of these videos, uh, because I'm not sure if what I'm communicating, if, like, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Is it valuable? So let me, let me know, and um, I'll talk to you guys next time.